Today we're kicking off a new mini-series on 3D scanning and how it can be used with 3D printing. We'll be covering a range of different methods of 3D scanning and seeing which method is best for which application. In this series intro, I'll be covering a brief history of the evolution of 3D scanning from its surprisingly early origins to the present day, and giving you a glimpse of what to expect from the rest of this series, so let's take a look. Simply put, 3D scanning is a technology which captures the shape and detail of an object in the real world and creates a digital 3D model of it. Amazingly, early concepts of some methods of 3D scanning date back not years or decades, but centuries, something I'll be talking a little more about in some future episodes. But early experimentation into digital 3D scanning as we know it today still dates back to the 1960s, as much as 20 years before the release of the Windows predecessor MS-DOS. At that point, it was basically still just a concept, and with minimal compute and processing power available, there was no real-world application for it. But by the 1970s, that concept had been merged with LiDAR, a technology which was originally produced by the US military in the 1950s that uses pulsed lasers to accurately determine distance. With this then fitted into planes such as the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird, it was able to produce topographical maps for military reconnaissance. Then, in 1987, the world saw the release of the first commercial 3D scanner, the Cyberware 3030. It was popularized in the late 80s and early 90s for 3D scanning actors and props for movies, including William Shatner for Star Trek IV The Voyage Home, Linda Hamilton, Robert Patrick and Arnold Schwarzenegger for Terminator 2, and a range of clay models of dinosaurs for Jurassic Park. It played such a pivotal role, in fact, in the evolution of movie special effects that in 1994 the pioneers of the Cyberware 3030 won the technical achievement at the Academy Awards. Up to this point, the starting price for a 3D scanner was $85,000 to US dollars which was worth even more back then. But in 1996, 3D scanning became much more accessible when David Vision Systems released one of the first affordable structured light scanners. Structured light scanners work by projecting a pattern, often a grid or stripes, onto the object they're scanning. A camera then feeds the resulting image into a computer which looks at how the projected shape is deformed and uses that to determine the shape of the object. Photogrammetry, which uses simple 2D photos of an object taken from multiple angles to produce a 3D model, really came into its own in the late 90s. Due to not needing big or expensive equipment when scanning and being able to manage larger subjects, it quickly became popular in areas such as archaeology and architecture, and is still used as one of the more common forms of 3D scanning today. In 2016, I spent three months in Egypt working on a series about archaeology, and almost all of the teams that we were filming were actively using photogrammetry in their study to create models of tombs and temples, when their site wasn't being blasted with sandstorms. We'll be looking more closely at photogrammetry later in this series. Since then, 3D scanning has gone from strength to strength with the first handheld scanners in the early 2000s, the release of the Xbox Kinect in 2010, which we'll look at more in a bit, and now not only are many phones and tablets fitted with LiDAR technology, but with the advent of AI, you can now produce 3D models with a video. Military tech often eventually finds its way into the creative sector, and much like how missile launcher technology eventually evolved into camera gimbals found in everything from Osmo Pockets to camera drones, 3D scanning has progressed from being a military target mapping tool to something so accessible that you at home could use it to capture the geometry of a real-world object and then 3D print it yourself. Today, whilst 3D scanning is still used for military mapping and movie CGI, it's been adopted into a myriad of use cases, from dentistry to video games. Even in the world of 3D printing, 3D scanning has a range of uses. You can obviously use it to capture the geometry of a real-world object and then 3D print miniature copies of it. Not only could this be great if you wanted a 3D printed model of your house or your cat, it could also be great for repairing something. Let's say a component of something broke. If you could then 3D scan that broken part, you could digitally repair it on your computer and then 3D print a perfect replacement. 
Equally, if you wanted to design something that would perfectly fit an existing object, whether it be a stand that is perfectly molded to the base of your original object, or an accessory that could clip onto something, if you could scan the real world object, you could then design around that in CAD and save you from having to measure every single dimension and axis of it. You could even 3D scan an entire environment, even if just so you could measure stuff in the future. I personally have a rudimentary but dimensionally accurate scan of every room in my house and my garden. So wherever I am, if I wanted to find out if something would fit somewhere in my house or just finding out how big something in my house is, I can just throw up the scan and measure it directly in the model. Over the last 60 years of 3D scanning development, not only has it become more accurate, smaller and cheaper, but several very different ways have been developed for capturing a digital copy of a 3D form. In this six part series, we'll mainly be focusing on exploring four different methods of 3D scanning. We'll dive into each method in detail in their own episodes, and then in the final episode of the series, we'll be putting them to the test to find out which methods are most suitable for different use cases in 3D printing. Almost seven years ago, I published a video showing you how you could use an Xbox Kinect as a 3D scanner. That video has remained one of my most popular videos of all time, but unfortunately the software and method that I cover in that video no longer works. So in the next episode in this series, I'll be remaking that anew, showing you how you can use your Xbox Kinect, whether it be the version 1 or the version 2, as a 3D scanner, and testing it to see how well it works for the purpose of 3D printing. I'll then be covering photogrammetry, turning any camera, even the one in your phone, into a 3D scanner, 3D scanning apps available for your phone or tablet, and then finally looking at dedicated 3D scanning hardware. Each method has its own strengths and its weaknesses, which we'll uncover throughout the series. In the final episode, we'll be using all of these methods to scan a range of different objects to see which method is best for using in some very different scenarios. And then not only am I going to be giving you an overview of the actual process for each of these methods and summarizing the results for myself, but the resulting prints will then be placed side by side to help you decide which method is right for you. Make sure you tune in to next week's episode where I'll be diving into the secrets of 3D scanning with an Xbox Connect. If you've enjoyed this video and like the sound of this series, please do hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss the exciting content I've got coming up. Thanks very much everyone, and until next time, happy printing. If next week's episode has already been published by the time you watch this, I'll pop a link to it over here. But until then, that'll be some of my other videos where you can learn something new or have some fun. Thanks very much for watching, a huge thank you to my channel members for your support, and until next time, happy printing.